Hello guys, I'm John Bender Waffles Algets and welcome back to yet another speed development commentary. This week we are looking at the lush overworld map. Um, this one proved to be one of my more popular speed developments that I've ever put out coming in at around 4,000 something views currently. Um, so it seems to have done pretty well with you guys and I want to sort of talk you through sort of my thought processes while we're doing this. So let's full screen this and then let's just get going. I'm actually going to turn the volume all the way down because we don't need to hear the music and let's go. So world maps are something that you don't really see in JRPGs very much anymore. And I feel like that, that really is something that we're losing out on because world maps are a fantastic tool for game developers. Uh, because not only is it a fantastic bit of art that you get to do that's just super fun, um, it's actually one of my favorite types of maps. But on top of that, it also serves a pretty good gameplay purpose in that it really sets the pace for your game. Um, you can do this physically by just putting in, you know, barriers, things that are blocking away, you know, I'm putting in rivers here, there's going to be mountains thrown in, trees, all these different things. But also at the same point, uh, or at the same time, it also has a tendency to give your players something to do outside of the main story, because you might be able to put stuff on the map that draws their attention and makes them want to explore a little bit, which is a useful tool, allows you to expand the world and just make it feel a lot more lived in. Now with this map, I wanted to try to make a, uh, you know, your sort of typical world map, sort of something that you would see in sort of original Final Fantasy games. This is very like lush, very green, lots of water, lots of rivers, lots of mountains, trees, everything like that. Exactly like typical baseline JRPG world map sort of stuff. Um, and see right there, I'm including in what I, what I kind of figure, uh, would be like the end bosses sort of area here on this little like volcanic Island. Um, notice that I completely block it off by mountains, meaning that you need an airship to get there. Um, so that's just one of those sort of things that you can do to, again, set the pace of the game. You are blocking it off so that your players can't get there until they've reached a certain point. Um, man, I'm getting a lot of Steam notifications in this video. <laughs> a lot of people playing games. Uh, so world maps, as I said, they're, they're probably my favorite type of map to do um, because you're, you're, it's, there's so much creativity to creating world maps. And it's the sort of thing where there's not a ton of rules um, when it comes to world maps. I know that in my tutorial series, I talked about some sort of basic guidelines that you should keep in mind. Um, for instance, you should have some basic knowledge of how geology kind of works and how like tectonic plates and all that sort of stuff. So if you're having like multiple islands, you want to try to make them look like they almost fit together because like that's, that's how worlds have been formed is that there are a series of plates that sort of interlock and as they move apart, they create different islands. Um, obviously with this map, that's not really something that, uh, I had to worry about too much because it's just one massive continent. Um, so I didn't really have to take that into too much consideration. It's also, you can also sort of sometimes think about like your placement of mountains, because again, you got those tectonic plates and when they push together, they create mountain ranges. So having these sort of ranges of mountains, as you see here, sort of in the middle of continents, um, sort of infers that things are coming together at this meeting point um, and just sort of, again, works from a basic geology standpoint. Um, also having different, different sort of zones in terms of like different biomes and sort of stuff like that. You see there's, there's a grassy area, there's snowy areas, and here we've got a desert. Um, it's really, uh, it gives this feeling of a, of a living world um, that is much bigger than it might actually be. On the map, I believe that this world map is yeah, this world map is 150 by 150, which actually it might shrink by the end of the video because I tend to um, make big maps and then shrink them down after I've defined their created area. Uh, one thing that I feel like sort of is something that not a lot of people think about is the 
as I was as I was saying earlier, your you sort of putting places that allow people to explore, or rather encourage people to explore. Now, if I was making this map, I might not necessarily um, have a quest that sends players to like this tower over here. There might not necessarily be a like main story reason for them to do that. But having that there, if you have a player who passes by it, you know, maybe they're coming from the town that's up over here and they just see it. They're going to want to go in there and see what's up. Um, you know, maybe there's some great treasure in there. Maybe there's a side boss. Maybe there's some like serious character development that they can only really see if they do this little like side area. It's, it's something that when you're making your game, if you are choosing to do world maps, it's a great tool for your arsenal to really like give your players, you know, not only more to do further padding out your playtime, which is when it comes to RPGs is incredibly important because you're, you're giving your players something to do besides just basic grinding. Um, and also on top of that, as I said, it just makes the world feel alive. It makes the world feel like there's history to it. And so I feel like that's something that you, you cannot really ignore and you really shouldn't. Um, so here we see the, the finished map, uh, which, <laughs> I, I think that world maps, a, a well-designed world map, when you zoom out of it all the way, it just looks like some sort of weird like camouflage texture or something. It always has like a very uh, varied sort of feel to it. And I really, really dig the look of a world map when you pull it out. Um, that's what she said. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where this is probably a speed development video that I'm probably most proud of. Um, I put in quite a bit of time coming up with the initial concept for this world map, because a lot of times my speed development maps, yes, are just sort of something that I make up on the fly, but other times there's something that I sort of have planned out. And this is one that I actually did have planned out because I initially intended this to be a playable, uh, to be a playable map. Like I would, I was planning on making a game around this I ultimately abandoned the project uh, just because I just don't have time. Um, but with something like world maps, you ultimately do want to be planning them out um, because your world maps, so much of your world maps design depends upon your story and depends upon the needs of your game. Um, if you just make a world map willy nilly and then try to fit your game to that world map, it's not going to flow correctly. It's not going to feel like a solid piece of work. Um, so that's something to sort of keep in mind when you're designing world maps is that you, it needs to be going hand in hand with your story development. Um, as you're sitting there writing a script, you should be plotting out like locations that you're going to need and in what order, um, and just sort of get that all figured out and then go about designing the world. So, uh, Really, that's all that I have to say about this particular map. Uh, if you guys like these commentaries, which you guys seem to, the last one got some pretty good reception. Uh, just be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel for more, and have a good one, guys.